out there in the mud, and finally he came up on his feet and never missed a beat. Sad to think that uh, a lot of my kids have left us going on to play in a big band upstairs. Lost some in military service. And lost some others. Very dear to us. But that's the way it goes. I remember another cold November. We used to play Aniston the last game of the season. Started later than they do now, so it'd be right about Thanksgiving time. And we playing them over here one cold night. In fact, it was when they were rebuilding Murphy Stadium. The old stadium used to run the other way, east and west. This was, I think, this was the first year that they. Don't believe that it's even quite finished to build it with WPA labor out of native rock around here. But it's cold that night that the horns froze up. The spit in the horns froze to ice. Everybody would run. They had some old oil drums with fires built in them. Some of the kids would get over there and get the horn up close to that old drum and get it thawed out enough where <laughs> some of them could play. One time down, we played Bessemer Thanksgiving morning, and it was snowing. It snowed during the game. We got out there like a bunch of fools. And the reason they played it in the morning, Alabama and Vanderbilt were playing that afternoon in Birmingham. We left here in the middle of the night to get down there and play that game in early in the morning. <laughs> we made a lot of trips. Uh, we were the sort of a novelty because we didn't have any bands north of us here. Uh, Huntsville didn't have a high school, we didn't have a band of any kind, I guess. Because every time they'd have something up at Huntsville, they'd charter us a bunch of buses and we'd take off for Huntsville. And we'd go to Rome to play. And a lot of small towns around. I don't know if they learned much in school and we were often. I think they finally decided we'd have to cut down on that business so kids go to school and learn a little something. But we enjoyed that and were instrumental in getting some bands programs started around other towns where we'd been. They thought they'd like try that too. And we'd go help them if they'd ask us to. We'd go tell them what we knew about it and how to go about it. Pretty soon, wasn't very long there were crossroads at a band. Since we were First, around here, we did introduce some new things. And pretty old now, but they were new at the time. Um, we were the first band that I know of that used the Flight girls, and uh, we started having homecomings. They never had homecoming, and uh, we had we did a deal that 
attracted quite a bit of attention. And as an entrance on the field, we let half the band line up on each side of the field in the company front and come charging out there like they're going to run over each other. And uh, we had, uh, we marched with timpani on a cart that was the first time I'd ever seen that done. And uh, I guess nobody's ever done it since. It must not have been a very good idea. But that was Mr. Lyles again. I went down to Mr. Lyles and told him we needed uh, we need to timpani, kettle drums. And he said, well, how much do they cost? And I said, I guess about $800. He said, well, let's get them. Can't play them if we don't have them. So I ordered a pair, and he, and he got Mr. Kittredge, who was at that time head of Alabama Power Company here, job Tom McKenzie has now. Mr. Kittredge was kind of a hobby tinkerer, and he built a cart that uh, we could mount those kettle drums on. And we'd go tearing down Broad Street with some good-looking gal playing the <laughs> kettle drums. That's cute, Dave. One of our majorettes, a little gal named Emmadale Nunley, she became Miss Alabama. And went to the Miss America contest in Atlantic City. I sat up all night arranging the music for her, take along with her so that she could sing with an orchestra up there. And she later sang professionally with the band in New York. And I know I'm gonna leave out a lot of it finally comes to mind that was a tremendous help to us. Was, he was sports writer for the Gads and Times. I guess probably the only one that had only sport writer that I had. His name was Frank Paget. Frank uh, retired a few years ago from the city of Gadsden, but he wrote great sports stories. All uh, one time, I think it was in 1940, we went down to play football game at Selma, Alabama. And we had an undefeated team. And uh, those who played in the band long in the 50s, 1950s, I have quite some memories of Camp Neody up at Gunnersville. We used to hold a band camp a week before school started. We'd go up there and stay all week, get some great work in. We'd get about a half year's work done in one week up there, day and night. They worked me pretty hard at night. There's always some clown, there quite a few clowns that didn't want to sleep at night. So I'd get them out there and march them in the dark while the rest of them slept. Kept me up all night long. I'd wake the bugler up in the morning without a wink of sleep. I think uh